seriously, I've been in therapy for about 20 years because I made one talk to a group of college people before. And I'm a little insulted. They said it was an hour and a half. I'll talk 20 minutes. That's how bad it was. So if you have to go to the bathroom, that would be the time to go. All right? Uh, I would like to congratulate uh, all the inductees. Uh, Father, this is a uh, probably in the, uh, in the annals of Cotter golf history. Uh, you probably don't know that I coached golf too. I was an assistant coach. Uh, right, Mike? And uh, my duties were to drive the team to the meet and get out of the way. Uh, I, I helped one young lady uh, shoot 109 in I O. I uh, I was there. I, I remember uh, asking her, how's it going? And she said, well, my best shot hit that girl right there. <laughs> and it was this girl limping up toward the green. <laughs> So uh, 50 years from now, I won't be talking about any kind of girls at all. Uh, Danny, congratulations. Uh, you're an impressive person. John Hopkins, uh, Stanford, and then I got these two rumped up. <laughs> <laughs> you know this thing, and that ugly St. John's in North North. Oh my goodness. Uh, you have better coaching, obviously. Uh, I would like to say a little bit something about uh, Will, since uh, I did have, uh, I did get to coach Will. Um, congratulations, Will. Uh, fantastic. It was a perfect name for this kid. I mean, through sheer force of Will, he made himself and his team that much better. And I will never forget that night against Pine Island. Uh, he's hurt. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And we got nobody, Pine Island goes in, they scored it like nine minutes ago, it's 27 12, we're done, and this kid just takes over again. We scored 38 points in the last nine minutes of the game. The guy, when I shook his hand, was still in shock. Unbelievable. Uh, and uh, the fact that you're honoring this guy, it, it, it's well deserved, well deserved. We put him in that uh, linebacker senior, now look at him. Uh, he's had a few beers, he's got a little bit bigger. But when he was in high school, there was nothing to this guy. Nothing to him. And uh, we said, we got to do something because our defense is terrible. And whoever said something about defense, you had no clue what you're talking about. You have to have defense, you're going to win. So we go, well, who are our best tacklers? All right, we'll put Will, we'll put Kirkaby in linemen. Okay, that's a great idea. Then who do we play in the second half because they're going to get killed? You finished the year and you did a great job. You did a great job. Congratulations. Uh, Will and Matt are two of three freshmen that played on my first team here. And I would hope we wouldn't forget that third one, a kid named Andy Bergler. Uh, we all remember the guys that scored the touchdowns and throw the touchdowns, but there were guys, Chris Chios, Craig Iverson, and Andy, who played as a freshman on the line, who deserve a little recognition too. And I hope someday they get a chance to be here as well. Drew, you're going to get yours. <laughs> you always did. So you'll be here someday, I know. I know. Ask any of you coach him in basketball, he gets his doesn't kind of stall. Right? All right. So you didn't have to tell him to shoot, did you? Right? All right. Will couldn't shoot. He shot all the time. All right. All right. All right. Before, uh, before we get started, I, I would just like to, uh, uh, before we get started, man, I would just like to uh, talk about Barbara Bryan here first for a little bit. Um, none of this would be possible without this woman right here. Uh, she's a remarkable woman. She has uh, faced her share of adversity, and she has raised four incredible young men. Padre, John Paul, Thomas, and Matthias. They are fantastic people. And if children are our legacy, you have a great one. I think your kids have contributed as much to this school as any family that's come through here. They have all been tremendous athletes, but they are better people, and that's because of you. And uh, short story, Thomas, he comes all the way from South Dakota to help my son be a better quarterback. That's the type of people they are. They're always willing to do something for someone else. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, finally, Matthias. Let's talk about Matthias. Uh, my first memory of him, I remember they hired me, and I was excited when I got the job until I saw the team I had a coach. <laughs> I think I got the job, Pat. I was the only one who took the job. <laughs> because I went down there and they got, well, there were some kids that throw the ball around. But oh my gosh. 
I look like the bad guy. They look like they're in middle school. Uh, Pat goes, well, who's your running back? I go, you kidding me? You look like an extra. Who's the boss? Who's got a good play? I have a solid. What would you tell me? You'll have a successful season if no one dies. <laughs> Well, how hard can this be? No one died. And then I saw him playing and someone could die. <laughs> someone could die. So then I get this, I get this chubby little kid three months out of, out of uh, middle school, but he controlled the ball. Great. We got something. We got something. I know in front of him, but we had something. All right? So uh, we're ready to go, and uh, he's not sure he wants to play. What? Well, uh, if he plays varsity football, he might quit. What? I can't have him quit. We'll let him sit. So I'm playing this guy. I don't anybody know the back burglar, that any back. You know him, right? I swear to God he was right-handed. What he threw with his left hand. <laughs> I'm a football coach, I couldn't fix it. I couldn't fix it. He had so many things wrong with that. Where did I start with a guy like that? Okay, you're my quarterback. It was awful. So then we go, alright. Well, we won't put Matt in, we'll put your baby Matt in, until uh, uh, we're sure he'll be okay. So we're playing Cal, the only second game of the year. We're doing all right. I mean, we're only down by 13, and part of it was because Andy threw one to the wrong team. Okay, so Andy didn't have one touchdown pass in his career. He was the Caledonian. Uh, so, uh, so there's that Andy, he's in the game, and... and uh, I go, I can't watch this anymore, man. I don't care if you do die. <laughs> I'm not watching this anymore. So he comes in the last seven minutes of the game. He throws two touchdown passes. He throws a two-point conversion to uh, Padre. And the rest is history. We went on from there to win the more games. Uh, <laughs> we were one and seven. And uh, a lot of those research he did with career opportunities, Matt got the guys together and decided, you know what, maybe we need to get better. And I think a lot of times, uh, you know, we, we give coaches too much credit. Where's the coach here? The guy met the coach, the high school coach, he probably went to the game right away. Uh, hang in there, buddy, where we are. Uh, if you get a good bunch of kids and they're committed to doing it, uh, they can turn things around, but coaches really don't do that. People like this do that. And Matt got kids out. We got some big lumox named Chios to come play football. He didn't play football. The guy's six foot five, three hundred pounds. He don't play football. What's the matter with him? All right. <laughs> Matt gets him to come out to play football. He ends up going to Wyoming. Plays Division One football. So uh, we have kids like this to make a difference. And uh, he took it upon himself to do that. And uh, he was instrumental in a lot of stuff. He stopped being a chubby little kid. He put away your cookies, he started working out, he started to resemble a football player himself. Uh, we never did get you in the weight room. We never did. You refused. You're almost anal about the weights. I don't know what that was, but you did. Alright? But he could run, so give him the ball, let him run. Right? Uh, so, uh, he, uh, he's done that his whole life. I mean, this kid, I mean, you like to think that you had something to do with it, but looking back, when I left here, I've continued to lose, and he's gone on to win wherever he's been. I mean, he came here and he won. He's gone to uh, St. Thomas, he's won. He went with McAllister, first time in 70 years. How do you win McAllister? I went to St. Thomas. McAllister is horrible. How do you ever win there? He did. It's a remarkable uh, human being, and I think if you stay in coaching, you'll be a Hall of Fame coach someday. Uh, in, our, in our last uh, regular season game, I remember we went up to play Cannon Falls. And uh, we're playing for the championship. We go from three years from the Bad News Bears, but here we are. We got a chance to win the championship for Connor High School, HBL champion. Uh, Matt shows up and throws three interceptions. Great. All right. <laughs> so we're down there, we're losing. Matt's down there, he's down on me, and I saw him go, right, what does a coach do here? You've got to be like Dr. Phil and go pat him on the back and the quarterback and see how you're doing. <laughs> so uh, I go down there and I say, Matt, you all right? He goes, yeah, I'm fine. I'm just not playing very well. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> so I said to him, I said, all right, Matt, you know what? The thing is that you're not playing well, probably better than any other quarterback around here, so I'm okay. Hand the ball to Will. Okay? So uh, in our last drive, uh, Matt and Will take us 80 yards down the field. We score the winning touchdown, and we are the uh, HBL champs. Our season ended that year. 
uh, when we played a Kingsland team that they haven't had in the history of that school. <laughs> they had uh, their backfield, their smallest back is 215 pounds, our biggest lineman is 195. We stopped them three times on fourth and short. Three times. And it wasn't blowing wind. The wind was 35, 40 miles an hour. We could only throw the ball half the game. We tried to survive two quarters and play the other ones as best we could. And we jumped on a fake punt. And we lost. But we were happy. That team went on. Nobody came close to all year. And I, I congratulated the guy at the end of the year that saw him when he won his championship. And he said, uh, if we would play you here, we would have lost. You were the best team we played. And uh, what a tribute it is to these kids to see how far they came. I think the real mark of a successful person isn't what they accomplished, it's what they had to overcome and accomplish. And these are a bunch of kids that came in as freshmen who came to a school that hadn't seen a lot of success and were willing to try and willing to put all that into it, to make that effort, to overcome all those shortcomings that we had and try to be successful and they did that. And that doesn't just uh, happen naturally. That says something about the people we had in this program. Uh, I'm glad that you have decided to honor Matt because that would never happen without him. Uh, for all his uh, remarkable athletic accomplishments, I don't think anybody deserves this uh, more than he does. Uh, the big head fake about football, basketball, and baseball is it really isn't about those sports. Yeah, it's about the type of person you are. People will forget what kind of athletes you guys were. You're going to get old, you're going to get fat, nobody's going to ever believe you in the play. Yeah, people will forget that. But what they will never forget is the type of people you are and what you've contributed, not only to college, but to everybody you've touched. Uh, Matt, you've always been a Hall of Fame human being, and that's more important, and that's what got you here. Congratulations, I love you. Actually, of course, with Denny, my first year. 
to push me. But Jim used to drive me around all kinds of tournaments and games, but for more of the, the mentorship. Guys like Larry Eberts, um, he let me call my own plays one game. He said, hey, you're gonna let, you can call your own plays for this game. Well, it turned out I only got the call for one half because I was calling too many pass plays. <laughs> Greg Junker and Pat Bowen uh, saw something in me and gave me the opportunity to come here and coach, get back to Potter. Uh, Mike Costello, I called him teacher, coach, colleague, and most importantly, friend. Assistant coaches who have uh, coached me here, especially when I coached baseball, Tom Schmidt, uh, Bill Beach, who did whatever needed to be done, whatever needed to be done. Bob B. Bowles has become a great friend of mine and uh, a great tribute to have that experience with you, Bob. Um, Jeff Conway, a very influential person in my life at a very influential time, so a special thank you to him. My teammates, especially the Gibson brothers, uh, who I've maintained a lot of friendship with. And I wasn't going to throw this joke in true, but since I'm struggling here, I'm going to throw it in. Um, don't think that when you're lining up a big putt, that might mean something that I won't bring up the fact that if it will, maybe it did before you did, but I'm sure you're going to see it. Uh, enjoy my experiences with these guys, just a great group of guys, and enjoy continuing that friendship with them. The players that I coached, uh, my brother Thomas and his friends, I, I coached them since they were little and growing up and meant a lot. And when we had a lot of success, those successes even meant a lot more just because of the relationship that we had. To see people like the Wolves here and the memories that we had with those families and those players and that's a lot. I'm almost done. <laughs> Last one, my family, um, my brothers, the one-on-one -on -one games in the driveway that often didn't end before the game point was scored because somebody got in the fight. Uh, <laughs> thanks to my wife and kids as I Coach, oftentimes you're, you're not there at dinner or gone on weekends. Thanks to them for the sacrifice. My mom for support. Um, she used to sit up like with the fans, but then she started sitting away from the fans. <laughs> and, uh, but I always got pleasure out of knowing that she enjoyed watching her kids compete on the court. And I always, it was always important for me to represent my family in the house, of course. All right, so as I reflect on what sports means to me and the meaning it's had in my life, um, they really pale in comparison to just the friendships and relationships that I've fostered throughout the years. And I remember Jeff Conway asking us at halftime, uh, along with some other things that I can't repeat right now, he said, how do you want to be remembered? And so hopefully I'll be remembered if somebody put my team to first. Finally, congratulations to Todd and your centennial. Um, I felt a lot of pride putting on the uniform, and hopefully a lot of kids will feel that pride for another 100 years, so thank you very much.